stress in your life? To learn how to deal with the emotional turmoil that causes strokes, heart attacks, bad health, and even weight gain? Life-changing habits for work, family, and everyone you deal with start here with Andrew Whitman. It's time for Get Warrior Tough on WCCP. 105.5 The Roar. Here's Andrew Whitman. What is going on? I'll tell you what, I can't believe the summer is gone, but it's time to get Warrior Tough, the most monumental hour in media anywhere. I'm leadership and mental toughness coach Andrew Whitman, joined by the mighty Steve Emplett from the Clubhouse Golf Radio. What's up, brother? It's you, man. How are you? I'm doing great, dude. I, the summer is gone, but there's still plenty of golf time out there, right? This is actually uh, arguably the best time of year. I mean, we've got a lot going on in golf all over the world right now. As you know, we're getting into the playoffs, and um, the temperatures are coming down. It's not as sweltering hot as it was. And, uh, yeah, I like it. I mean, I think if we can get in. I don't like freezing cold weather, Andrew, but I can tell you, it. Uh, yeah, it's a great time of year to play. I mean, finally, you know, the days are still long, and they're warm, and um, this is just a great time of year for golf all the way around. That's awesome. And I know it's a lot of people's favorite time of year in general. But uh, So, listen, um, if you guys want to get in on the conversation on Twitter, use the hashtag GetWarriorTough. Uh, go to GetWarriorTough.com, like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube videos. Listen, Steve, we gotta. I am so excited again. Now, I promised the listeners, everyone, that by the end of summer, I would get my leadership mentor, Lieutenant Colonel John Pulchetti, back on. And uh, if everyone remembers, we were talking about uh, uh, we had a fundraiser, and it was um, – he, he did a fundraiser for uh, Marine Corps Odyssey, and it was just so awesome. And he's back on. Uh, hey, Colonel, are you there? I'm here, Drew. How you doing this morning? Good. I'm so glad to have you, man. I'm so excited. So tell me what uh, – so give, give everyone an update on where we kind of left everything off. And I know we wanted you wanted to talk a little bit more about the uh, MEPS triangle. Roger. Um, yeah, we left off with the, with the fundraiser. We had it yesterday. We've been uh, uh, generating money from various local businesses around here for the last month or so. And uh, yesterday at our at our raffle and little uh, little show, we had uh, we pulled in about thirty three hundred dollars, and we're up close to twelve thousand for donations uh, in total from a lot of our local businesses and some of my associates up here. So so wow. I'm thrilled to death we'll be able to deliver this to the general at the next session in September. And so how, again, now that was like how much for, we were. What was the goal? It was to get. Um, another class or two classes or uh, right so how much was it take to do one more iteration of it was it about seven thousand it's, it's about no it's about twenty five thousand oh, twenty five. so okay, we, we've so got we, about we've got enough for half a class half a class of the game but uh, so, know, we right now, so we want everybody to stay on it coming so right so we want everybody to stay on it as it stands yeah yeah so what's the what's the website address again could you tell us uh, we want to stay on it we're only halfway there Right to helping these folks out. These Roger, Roger so. yeah, it's it's uh, Semper Fi. Just go to outdooroddyssey dot com and you'll see in the in the military section it'll give you a link to to the Semper Fi Odyssey. It's Semper Fi Odyssey and go to uh, outdooroddyssey um, dot org. Okay, great. Com. It's impressive. Dot, dot com dot org dot org. Is it org? I thought it was org. It, it is org. You're <laughs> okay. right. Um, it's Sunday morning, right? Uh, exactly. Well, Saturday morning in Radio Land. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Sunday the days all run together. <laughs> uh, we're all confused. It's all good, Colonel. Hey, so uh, I wanted to uh, let you. Uh, we we spoke off the air, and you wanted to make some clarifications about uh, you know the MEPS triangle, and just kind of remind everybody what it was, what the MEPS triangle is again, and then um, kind of clarify what you were saying last time. Right. This is a, the MEPS triangle is a, is kind of a key component of the entire program, and and uh, the general sets it up as a you know everybody understands what an equilateral triangle is. Is, right, it's got all all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal, and he defines mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional self. and And I think that everybody has a definition. If you threw those four words out, everybody would would be able to link to something that they understand about your condition under any one of those four definitions. But just to reiterate, his his definition of your mental health is your ability to set goals. And your physical ability is that is is your capability to build and follow a plan. Your spiritual uh, evaluation is your ability to hold yourself accountable in tune with your moral compass. And then the final one is is the emotional, and that's your ability to share yourself with others. And the piece that I know that I said equilateral triangle last time we were talking, um, but that's really if you do it, if you do an evaluation of yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, what I find myself, and and I think what a lot of our Marines find when we when we bring it to the Semper Fi Odyssey, and in general, most people really have like a lean to, right? It's not an equilateral triangle. We're, we're weak someplace along the line, 
any objective is really to, to then work your your weak point till your triangle gets to be more in balance and, and the angles and the sides begin to be, become equal with one another again rather than being stuck in a lean-to position. And I don't think that we got to that point in our last conversation, and I just wanted your, your listeners to be able to understand that balance is the goal, but, it, but mm. it's not necessarily the shape that you're going to find yourself in the first time you do an evaluation. That's brilliant. I mean, I love that lean to thing, man. Now that's because that's really we all do find ourselves in that and trying to find balance and get to the equilateral. That and have you found that it kind of frees you up to go ahead and make adjustments if you you know and and not be in a perfectionist mode. Like if you were like, oh, it has to be equilateral, that it doesn't give you a chance to work on yourself without beating yourself up. I, well, I find a couple of things. If, you know, when you do the when you do it the first time, you're trying to make it balance. If you understand the definition, right? right? You're going, but but you, when you do an honest self assessment, you really can't. And then when you look at the lean to, you're going, holy cow! You know, <laughs> I need to I need to work on this stuff. And and you know, the perfectionism thing is really kind of problematic because a lot of perfectionists are really self centered. Because mm. when you get you know when you get down to it, the perfectionist piece is really about you. Right, right. It's about, it very narcissistic. It's about am I going to succeed at this, or am I doing this exactly perfectly correct, and not necessarily about what the end result of it is going to be out in the world. That is an interesting take on perfectionism. And of course, you know I'm going to steal that. And but but uh, everything well, that I, I, I had just comes stole, from I me. stole it from the general. I mean, that's it. Right, <laughs> What's up, so, general? We're taking free. your stuff, man. But yeah, I, that's an interesting take on perfectionism. That it's very you know it's it's self centric. It's it's narcissistic, and because I have to be part. And when, you know, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I don't know if you remember, but when you know you first got a hold of me, man, I was a you know just a hardcore perfectionist. Everything had to be just perfect, and it's just an exercise in frustration. You know, it wasn't about being excellent. It was about being perfect. Why do you think I buried you in the armory for a year? I, well, is that why? <laughs> you were a perfectionist, yeah. and my armory needed help. Oh, man. Dang it. <laughs> Funny <laughs> how that works out. Yeah. Oh, what a good time. Not really. But, no, it's a, you know what? I, it, it's, that's been a hallmark of my career, actually, though, is you know, getting the hardest problem, the thing that needs, you know, needs fixing. And then yeah, and you kind of started me on that. You put me in the hardest thing and then go work it out. And then, you know, because I did it and did it well – or had results, I'll say it, then, then you just keep doing it because that's what champions do. When you, you find something that works for you, you just do more of that. That's absolutely correct. That is absolutely correct. you got to keep repeating the things that are successful, right, and, and, and add to them and build on them. All right, so Steve had a question for you, Skipper. You know, I, when you're looking at – when you're dealing and you're training the teams and, and you're doing it, obviously you've got a, a great background doing that. You know, how do you, how do you deal with that team effect where you build cohesion and you get them to, to maybe all come together? You know, anytime you're dealing with more than one person, there's dynamic people and personalities and, and you've got a lot of egos involved. How do you kind of make all of that come together, you know, kind of make it cohesive? In it, it, specifically at the Semper Fi Odyssey, Steve, or just yeah, in I'd general? Yeah, like I think yeah, because obviously you're bringing that in, but or you know that or any other example you want to give. Well, at the, well, we can we can do this as two two phased answer, right? The Semper Fi Odyssey is um, oriented at at teaching these young Marines uh, how to how to set up to successfully transition out of the Marine Corps and in, into the civilian world, and. And everybody comes to this with some level of baggage, um, either physical baggage or, or mental baggage. Virtually everybody has some level of, of post-traumatic stress. Um, and some people are carrying, obviously, physical wounds that, are, that go much deeper than, than yeah. the, the post-traumatic stress part does and are much more readily visible. But, but by opening up the baggage early on in the game, on basically on day one, I start with my own um, my own medical history and my own baggage and the piece that ended my Marine Corps career. Um, and then so that everybody kind of sees that, that, hey, that guy is a lot more like me than what I thought. He's been through this same kind of a thing or something similar to it. And once everybody on a team opens up with what their kind of their worst nightmare, what's the thing that keeps you awake at night, um, then everybody on a team all of a sudden has something in common with everybody else and a whole bonding process then gets easier. And I've been extremely lucky in my programs, and I've never really had anybody who just absolutely refused to play in, or, or to participate in, in, the, in the event. And I've seen a guy or two like that. And those are really hard cases to deal with. Um, 
so so the the opening up of the whole weakness thing in this particular venue serves to really open the door to 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 getting some level of bonding across the team early on in the week and then it's just it's kind of a force of personality type of deal to keep everybody engaged and and uh and it's really it's quite emotionally draining over the course of the week because you really got to be on top of your game every day because you're not sure which piece of baggage is going to come out on Tuesday or Wednesday wow. or Thursday? Right. Um, in in the larger in a larger context in a in 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 a setting, um, you know, a business setting or or a Marine Corps setting, um, a lot of that is is just personality. I think I think Andrew would would uh, corroborate me on on this particular statement. Is it your personality, your ability to to state your goals? and the organization's goals and then and then lead from the front to make those goals a reality and be able to constantly exhibit results right i mean if you if you work your ass off in a field and you get better and you're shooting better or you're moving better or, or your 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 25 mile time is faster you know next month than it was the month before then there's a demonstrable measure of success yeah. and and success feeds on itself and and when you're able to exhibit this success to your team then everybody feels proud that they know that they were part of that that they accomplished that that's so good hey so let me um just a quick follow up on that is it, you, because not just the success piece because i had a commanding officer that his mantra was trained to be miserable like we needed training in that uh, and would drive us to the next success and drive us and beat us down to, you know, and if we didn't get the, you know, the success, then we're getting beat down. You didn't, you never beat us down. I mean, if we, it was the opposite was that if we ever had that look from you that you were disappointed or we felt like you were disappointed in us, we never wanted that to happen. So uh, I think the success piece is right. Um, but also at the same time, there was a, I don't want to, yeah, I, it is, you nurtured us and encouraged us instead of beating us down. Well, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anybody train a dog successfully with a whip or a stick. Okay. Um, and and so that's, that's kind of viewed as inhuman, right? If, if, you, if you drove down the road and you seen some fellow beating his dog with a stick, you'd probably stop and say something, okay, and, and try to put, it, put an end to it. You, you su- su- successfully train um, anything that it is that you, that you want to train w- with a with a, a care, right? With care, care demonstrated for for what it is that you're that you're trying to train, whether it be your bird dog, or whether it be a company or a battalion of rings. If they if they honestly believe that you don't care about them, then they're not going to care about you. But if they honestly believe uh, that you care about them, that you love them, then they'll do anything for you. And and that's personality, I think, Andrew. That you know, some people are just. I don't know, you know, whoever the fellow was that, that, that engaged in beating down a unit um, that, that didn't care about the unit. He probably cared more about himself and, and <laughs> believed that the success of the unit was a reflection of what he was doing and, and probably couldn't achieve that level of success. Wow. All right, so, hey, look, Skipper, we got to take a break. Um, will you hang on with us? I will. After I will. Awesome. I'll be here.